Hello everyone, welcome to an episode of TC Talk back today with another video. And in today's video, I want to kind of go over Fi as a hero. We've kind of gone over him a little bit, you know, in the Uprising review and the set review. But I want to go over Fi as a part of Uprising, right? And what I think about the hero, what I think his design was for, um, and kind of key cards, and basically how to approach the hero initially and what can possibly help you like build your first decks and kind of go along there. You know, like every hero in Flesh and Blood, there's a million ways you can build a hero, right? But I, I'm a firm believer that LSS creates heroes with a certain archetype in mind and kind of a certain game plan in mind, so to speak, ideal game plan. Honestly, obviously, you can kind of have like, you know, what people would consider jank archetypes based off like the meta and stuff like that. But overall, I think that LSS does a good job of giving you ways that, you know, the hero is supposed to be played. And I'll kind of go over that today and kind of give you a good idea that way you can start building your deck effectively and really you know make the most of the cards that you have available so again for anyone's not aware with five you may start with a phoenix flame in your graveyard and then once per turn you can pay three resources to return a phoenix flame from your graveyard to your hand this ability costs one less for each dra draconic chain link you control so if you Control three chain links. This ability is for free, right? And what is a Phoenix Flame? Just so people understand, um, I have the old version of it right now. I'll update this. But it's basically, it's a token rarity, but it's technically an attack action card where if you have two or more Draconic chain links, Phoenix Flame gains plus one. So it's basically like a Kadachi. It's like a free Kadachi in a way. Um, and it can be buffed by other cards in the set. So, you know, there's certain key cards that, both Phi and Jerm I have access to or Phi has access to that are kind of, you know, builders of the decks per se, right? One of them is Rupture cards. Uh, most of these are in the form of Jisker Draconic. Most of them are three blocks, and we'll talk about that in a second. But basically, these are cards that are meant to be played super late in the chain, typically Chain Link 4, and they have really big on-hit effects if you play them after chain, chain Link 4. For example, Red Hot is normally just a 0 for 4, um, but if you play it after four chain link four or higher, you reveal the top X card of your deck where X cards is Draconic chain links. And then it, however many red cards are revealed this way, you deal that much instance of a damage. So if you if it's on chain link four and you reveal four red cards, it deals one instance of four damage and the regular four physical damage. So it's basically a two for eight, right? Um, so that's a really good rupture card. He also has cards that are usually Draconic actions that go get Phoenix Flames. Most all the ones that go and get Phoenix Flames, actually all the ones that go and get Phoenix Flames are Draconic Actions because since Dromai can use them too, they didn't just want to label it to just Draconic Ninja. Um, so they have that as well. And then In Flames, another one as well, it goes and gets Phoenix Flames. And then you have, you know, more Rupture cards. So he has access to a decent amount of cards. And then finally, a lot of the Draconic Ninja cards either have on-hit effects to banish cards to be able to create more links, or they have natural go again. So what does this all mean, right? So basically what Phi is meant to do from a hero standpoint, in my opinion, what LSS is designing him to do, he's, he's similar to Chain in where you can take a four-card hand and make it a six-card hand or a seven-card hand, right? Or through draw effects, through like Toma Firebrand and Phoenix form, you can draw even more cards. The difference with Phi as opposed to some heroes is there's nothing you can do about it to give him to stop him from getting more chain links unless you have like ice. That's the only thing, right? Whereas with Katsu, a lot of his draw mechanic and a lot of his like on hit effects were when this hits. Phi doesn't have that. He does have some cards that do that, but not all of them do that, right? So I'm kind of I'm gonna show you what I would call like buckets of cards, right? For Phi and and kind of how you approach it. Basically, in my opinion, you need to approach Phi with, you can do like a rupture build or a draconic build or like a heavy go wide build, whatever it may be, you can do that. In my opinion, as a player, I think if you do not, if you do not build Phi in a full draconic state, you're taking away from what the hero is strong at and you're trying to make the hero do something he's not, right? Like we're, I'm hearing some builds, I'll talk about Blittle, uh, God forbid again. Um, and then they're talking about playing like cards that are not draconic and then playing like Bram with Cinder Skin and being able to, you know, uh, give another card or like a Kadachi or something um, draconic or something like that. But basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to use cards that aren't draconic and make them draconic when you can just build full draconic anyway. And it's a really powerful deck. Um, some of you agree or disagree with me, but in my opinion, if you're not using Phi's like full draconic capabilities, you're just taking away from what makes the hero powerful. 
because even down to his hero ability, he's meant to be played in a full draconic state. Like that's just, that's just how it is. There's no way around it. So I have four buckets here. The first bucket is our go again with on hit effect cards. So most of these cards, all these cards are two block cards. Most of them come in red, yellow, and blue. Um, and what these basically are, they're just kind of ninja attack actions like mounting anger, rising resentment and soaring strike. And what these are, are when this card hits X happens, right? So when mounting anger hits, you can banish a card from your uh, hand with cost less than number of draconic chain links you control. If you do, it gains plus one, and you may play it this turn. Rising resentment is you can banish a card with less co with cost less than amount of chain links you control. If you do, it costs one less to play this turn. And then soaring strike is the same thing, except when the card that you banish it gains go again, right? That if it doesn't already have it. So these are really good to help basically create you know, it, it buffs your current hand already and it forces the opponent to be like, okay, if I do not, if I let this hit, his hand's going to turn and be even better. Right. If I let mountain anger hit the next card is going to get a plus one buff likely, especially if it's on like chain link Two, rising resentment. It's like, if you play rising resentment on chain link two and it hits, you can then banish mountain anger and play it for free instead of one soaring strike. Right. If, if you, you could banish a card, like, you know, uh, any card that doesn't have inherent go again and give it go again, right? Even though Soaring Strike's ability isn't as useful unless you're going to play a Rupture card after it. Um, so that's kind of the trade-off with that. So the trade-off with these cards is most of these cards, if not all of them, have to be played on Chain Link 2 in order to get their effect. You can play Mountain Anger and Rising Resentment and Soaring Strike on Chain Link 1, and it's totally fine. Um... <coughs> It's just if you do that, you're going to have to banish a zero cost card. Uh, you want to at least play on chain link two so you can banish up to a one cost card, which is really nice. Right. Um, so that's kind of the trade off with them. But these are pretty much auto includes in your deck. One, because they're go again two because they're draconic and three, because they have extra add effects. And you might like only run two out of three of these and they're in their full like um, red suites or something like that. But. Like, I run Mountain Anger and Rising Resentment, but I don't run Sword and Strike um, because all my cards pretty much have Go Again anyway. Uh, but that's kind of this bucket, right? So that, those are some cards you look at. So the second card, the second uh, bucket is just general Go Again attack. So we went from Go Again with on hit effects. Now we're at Go Again. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we have Rebellious Rush, Ronin Renegade, and Dust Runner Outlaw, right? Um, and then we also kind of have Bram with Cinder Skin, even though that has an ad effect. Uh, these are just, you know, typical draconic ninja attack actions that have go again and fuel your turn. In my opinion, in every draconic build you have, you should have these cards, in my opinion, because these start your turn. All your other cards that have on hit effects or have link effects or anything like that are turned on by these cards, right? These are the these are your combo starters, if you will, if we're talking in Katsu, on Katsu speak, right? Um, I just think that they're... Like I've had people tell me, like, don't run Dust Runner Outlaw, I'll just run Brand with Cinder Skin. Well, I'll run both because now I have 12 cards in my deck that have go again and can start off and like help all my other stuff. So all of these are two blocks as well. So keep that in mind, but that's because they're aggro based. So that's just something you got to think about. Then you have just straight draconic cards. This is the third bucket of cards you gotta look at. These are the three cards that go and get Phoenix Flames. Um Personally, I think all three of these cards are auto included in any deck. So you have nine, nine slots are automatically taken. Um, Flame Call Awakening is one of the best cards that, that Fi can run, hands down. Uh, when you play an attack, when you attack with Flame Call Awakening, if you've played another red card this turn, you may search your deck for Phoenix Flame, reveal it, and put it in your hand, then shuffle. Why this is useful is when you play this card, basically, and you get its effect, you basically play Attack, Flame Call, Phoenix Flame, Phoenix Flame, Ember. Like, you can do so much with this and, and really fuel like really wide turns in flame does the same thing when in, when you attack with in flame if you played in our red card this turn um you may return a phoenix flame from your graveyard to your hand right so if, so if you've already played flame call earlier in the game you have two flames in grave you know you play a attack you play this you go get a phoenix flame you play that phoenix flame then you use five's ability to go get the second phoenix flame it just allows you to recur those phoenix flames really quickly and honestly, those Phoenix Flames are useful for so much. One, they're basically little Kadachi attacks to help, you know, threaten Mask. Um, the second thing they're useful for is getting rid of, like, Ash Wings uh, or getting rid of things that are, like, one power 
even like getting rid of spectral shields and stuff like that. So they'll be really useful for that. Or at the very end of your turn, they'll be really useful to pop auras and, and other stuff. So that's that. Um, and they're easy ways to get to your rupture cards, which are our next section that we're going to talk about. And then you have Rise from the Ashes, which gives your next attack plus three, and you may return a Phoenix Flame from your graveyard to your hand. Again, I think all not like nine copies, right? Three, three, and three are just automatic in this in this deck. Um, I don't think there's like any any way you don't do that, right? So that's my third bucket. And most of those are all two blocks. They are all two blocks as well. Then you go into your rupture cards. These cards are a little bit harder to get off, but they have really high bonuses and they're three blocks. Um, I'm not saying you have to run all of them, but I do think Fi either is going to run a full rupture build where he has a lot of go again attacks followed by like all the rupture cards, or he's going to run like a draconic build, even though it's all draconic. I call it a draconic build where you run like a mix <coughs> with one or two rupture cards. So like red hot, we already talked about that's effect. Rise up's effective. It's played on chain link four or higher. Um, basically how many Phoenix Flames you've played that, that turn, it takes that, doubles it, and then adds it on to its power. So it comes in for three normally. If you've played one Phoenix Flame that turn, you're going to hit plus two because it's one times two uh, for five dominate, and it gives a dominate. If you've played two Phoenix Flames, it's going to get plus four because two times four it comes in for seven dominate, or all three, you'll come in for nine dominate. Um, then you have Breaking Point, which basically turns into a Command and Conquer um, when it's played on chain link four or higher. So again, really good for that. So these cards are three blocks. They're a little bit hard to get off. And I think it really depends on what you're running, but also think they're really good. Um, there's even lava burst, which is a zero for two, but if it's four or higher, it's a zero for five and it's it has cost zero resources. So it's basically a zero for five. Um, the card like Soaring Strike is really good into these. If you can play Soaring Strike in on your third link and then banish one of these, um, you'll be able to play it on your fourth link and it'll gain go again. So it's really good for that. Um, but these cards are kind of like your power cards and they're a three block. So it really depends on, you know, how you want to look at things. But those are the four buckets of cards, right? Um, and so when you're building your deck, you got to think about those buckets of cards and, and kind of how they go. Again, personally for me, I think the go again cards are automatic. So this is like nine slots of your deck. I think all of these are included. And personally, I would include Blue Ronin Renegades just because it's literally a draconic blue head jab. It's really useful. Um, your next auto includes are your cards that go get Phoenix Flames. That's another nine slots. So looking at it now, right, like already, in my opinion, 18 of your red slots are taken um, and three of your blue slots. So 21, a third of your deck is between these two buckets. Um, then you have to decide, do you want to do like a lot of, you know, go again with on hit effects? Do you want to do a lot of rupture cards um, or do you want to do like a mix of both? Right. So it just really depends on how you do it. Um, I'm seeing some belittle packages. I'm seeing some pummel. I'm seeing some crazy, like crazy stuff. And it's amazing that people are thinking about that way. But for me, from a competitive perspective in this game, we're going to be playing a lot against a lot of ice and you're going to have to be super competitive, right? Um, you're going to be super consistent. Sorry, as a word I was, I meant to say, you're going to be super consistent with your deck. You cannot have an off turn against ice. It's already going to be hard enough. Um, playing against old time and prison bar is going to be hard enough. So, you know, we'll have to see how the meta shakes out, but I think Fi's power is going to be in his consistency. In my sealed pools, I was still dealing 10 to 15 damage a turn with a crappy sealed deck that I forced. I can't imagine what a tune deck's going to do. So, just really got to think about it. Really got to think about what you're going to do and how you're going to build it. But hopefully it's made sense. I think just the Draconic is kind of the key to him. His whole ability is based around it. A lot of his cards are based around Draconic chain link. So if you don't run things that are Draconic, you're going to turn off a lot of his cards abilities. Um, yeah. So that's just my opinion uh, as we go forward. And we'll kind of, you know, really keep talking about it more and more. But Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully this gave you a good idea and like more of a breakdown on how the cards work um, and kind of like the buckets of cards for Fi. I'm going to be doing tomorrow, I'm going to be doing like a sealed and draft uh, review. I did one sealed, one draft. I went six and three combined record between the two events. Um, so I did pretty decent with Fi. Uh, and yeah, so I'll kind of give you my idea as you go into your pre-release this weekend and kind of see, you know, what what is best for you and what cards you should look out for other than the obvious ones, of course. Um, and then I'll be showing some of my deck text as well. And then be giving out, um, also some other thoughts on like, 
other classes and stuff like that. Before I go, I should have said this at the beginning of the video. So if you're here when when this talks about it, um, you're safe. But I'm giving away. Let me find them here. Sorry. So we have my our white border cards, right? I'm giving. I gave these away. I'm I'm gonna mail them out this week. I'm sorry I didn't get to it before Vegas. I'm literally gonna go tomorrow and do it for the three winners. Once I do that, I will send you the uh tracking number so i apologize for that it 100 percent will go out this week you're gonna get your cards i really apologize for the delay on that um hopefully y'all enjoyed the video i'm glad to be back glad to be making content um let me know what y'all want to see the amount of love that i got from y'all was actually insane um it was kind of weird for me right like i'm just not used to that <laughs> um of people coming up and like knowing anything about me or anything like that so it was pretty crazy um y'all are really really amazing people I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll have a good rest of your night. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you want to. If not me, it's completely fine. Go to creator. Leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. And I'll see you all next time on TCU Talk. Thank you all so much.